everyone, Arlen here. Welcome back to Arlen's Travels. How in the world are you guys doing today? It is so good to see you again and thank you so, so much for stopping back by to see what I'm up to. And what I'm up to today, as you can see, I'm in my home here and I'm actually sitting in my little office area here in our mud room <laughs> in our house is where I have my little desk set up in my iMac computer setup. And I know I look like I'm like in the sunlight here. I'm really sorry. It's so cold outside today, but it is really bright. So please just pardon my, uh, my backlighting here and, uh, we're going to get through this video. Uh, first thing I wanted to do was say thank you so much for all of you who have recently subscribed to my channel. Thank you so much. I know a lot of you have come over from my Arlen's Country Craft Corner channel and welcome over here to my travels channel. It's a little bit of a different world over here, but I hope you enjoy it just as much. So thank you so much for all of my new subscribers. Thank you all so much for all of your sweet comments and for taking the time to watch my videos. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And what I'm coming to you today with is a conversation, really. And I will be providing you links in the description box below. But it is really a, a conversation about using a mobility scooter when traveling and, you know, really to the point of cruising, flying and cruising. Uh, just recently, in the past three uh, cruises that we've been on, I have used a mobility scooter. One, the first one, my dear friend Barb, as you all know now that you've you know been watching my videos, and Don, her husband, allowed me to borrow one of theirs. Well, after I did that, it changed my world, you guys. Uh, I have some bad knees happening, and I've got some achy joints happening, but mostly it's because of my knee and you know, I, I, it's just a lot easier to use a scooter while on board a cruise ship. Cruise ships are long and they it, it takes a lot to get from one end of the cruise ship to the other. And, and by the time I would walk around and walk around and walk around, I'd be exhausted, you guys, if I needed to walk around on this knee. And then I would be no good for the next day or whatever. So Chris and I decided to go ahead and purchase a mobility scooter for me after I used uh, Barb and Dawn's that for one that one cruise. We got home and we ordered it, and I'm going to tell you about what I use and you know give you some ins and outs and some information about that. But I also wanted to tell you for those of you who cruise, I just went on the uh, Princess website. I cruise with Princess uh, all the time, and I'm sure that there is. Uh, the same, a uh, very similar website, if not the same website provided by other cruise lines. We are pretty much exclusively Princess Cruisers. We just cruise with Holland, as you know, uh, one time. But uh, this is the information I got in their FAQs. I'm going to give you a link for this in the description box below. But just to let you know, they do give you two options where you can rent scooters from the from the cruise line or from these specific uh, businesses that work with the cruise lines. Uh, one is Special Needs at Sea, and I'm gonna give you the number, and the other one is Scoot Around. And, uh, you know, these FAQs give you all the information that you need in order to be able to rent a scooter and then what is required when on board. There's not a lot required, but what you know, what they, they, they give you dimensions of how wide your scooter should be uh, to fit through the standard stateroom doors. And we take the, the uh, handles off of like these kind of handles, you know, come with the chairs on the scooter. We take them off, we remove them and the scooter goes right in. Now it's not saying you got to jimmy it around a little bit and uh, get it going in straight, but it will go in straight. You are not allowed to leave your scooters sitting outside in the hallway. That is not allowed on Princess Cruises. And it's very frustrating when you're on another scooter and you have to get by another scooter that's sitting in the hallway. Let me tell you, that's no fun. So anyway, I, I do want to discuss uh, about the airports with you. Uh, but first of all, let me tell you the kind of scooter that we purchased. We did a lot of research. Uh, Chris's daddy also had a scooter, so he kind of knew a little bit about scooters and about where to go to find one. So we went to the Spin Life 
website. That's where we purchased our scooter from. And uh, our model is a Spitfire Pro SE four wheel portable. Now I'm a bigger lady. Now I've been losing a lot of weight, you guys. I've lost 62 pounds in the last, since last July. But when we first got this, I was, I had that extra 60 pounds on me. So we bought this scooter because it does, you know, the poundage goes up a little bit. But, you know, you can buy other sized scooters that will fit you better. And you can just look through their website. They also give you a 1-800 number that you could call and you could speak to somebody about what the best scooter for you would be. You know, this was the best scooter for me. And it is, I believe it's a, a drive medical. And it it was a chunk of change, you guys. I'm just going to tell you straight out. It was $899. Well worth it for me, though. Well worth it for me. Because I it just takes the stress off of me when on the cruise ship, you guys. Those of you with mobility issues are going to understand what I'm talking about. You may be able to, I can walk around the house, no problem. I can, I haven't even taken this here in town to go to Walmart and stuff as of late. But if I just have to walk into a store real quick and come back out, I'm fine. But anytime I have to do sustained walking for any, any length of time, for any distance, you know, I get tired and my knee gets sore and so on. So anyway, this is a, a, a wonderful little scooter. Uh, it, the battery it comes with has been sufficient. It does, it says here up to nine miles. And I can pretty much tell you, I, I see no reason why it wouldn't go nine miles. I mean, we dr I drove mine from the ship into Skagway, Alaska, all around Skagway and back. And I barely lost like a little blip. You know how your battery, you have little blips that tells you, you know, when you need to charge or whatever. I didn't have any trouble at all with it, with it you guys. But just to tell you that, so it says in stock and ready to ship up to 15 miles with upgraded battery option, limited time only, five color shrouds, which I have. In other words, you can change it, change the little, you know, they have different places on the scooter where you can change it to, from red to yellow to what are the colors? Red, yellow, green, blue, and white, you know. So, uh, include and then a limited time, only five color shrouds included a $99 value for free. A Delta Tiller, I'm not sure what that is, to be honest, and a large bas plastic carry basket, which puts which you put on the front, which is handy, again, anywhere you go, you know. Uh, the key specs, drive range up to 15 miles, uh, max speed, 5 miles per hour, heaviest piece, 40 pounds, weight capacity is 300 pounds, the whole, the total weight of the scooter is 111 pounds, but you can take it apart very easily. It's not hard to take apart, like to put in the back of a taxi or the back of a van and so on, back of your car, you know, so on and so forth. So uh, it says the Spitfire Pro SE offers the break apart convenience of a travel scooter combined with five color choices and an optional extended battery. A wraparound delta is easy to grip and ample delta, meaning the handlebar, I guess. Easy to grip and ample ground clearance helps to go over small bumps. Very true. For travel, the scooter disassembles into five pieces to fit into a car trunk. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to let you read this, the stats if you're at all interested in this. Uh, what I want to get to is, hi everybody, I'm coming in here, uh, morphing in with a little bit of a voiceover. Uh, Chris came in and he said, Arlen, I didn't hear you talk about these two things and they need to be sure that they know that they need to order a travel scooter, a scooter that is specifically made to travel. And on the Spin Life website, you can put in a search for travel scooters. And what are not allowed are lithium ion batteries. They are not allowed in the bottom of the plane. So you be sure that your scooter, whatever you order, does not have a lithium ion battery. Okay? Again, they are not allowed under the, the jets. So one, make sure that it's a travel scooter, and two, make sure it does not have a lithium ion battery. All right, back to our regularly scheduled programming. Thanks a lot, y'all. How easy is it to travel with a scooter? How easy is it to travel once you're on board your cruise ship with a scooter? So let's talk about that. Let's talk about the airports first. This is what I was super, super nervous about. 
usually we have to fly across the country because we, you know, our, our go-to cruise is Alaska, you guys. And I'm, I'm just being honest. So, uh, and most of uh, Princess Cruises go off of the West Coast. So, we have to fly a lot. And what we did the first time is I got wheelchair assist and I checked my scooter at uh, when you check in your suitcases. And then I did the wheelchair assist through uh, to the gate. And then I had wheelchair assist at any uh, layover that we had on the way. And then when we got there, the first time we did it, we got to Vancouver and they were going to deliver the scooter with the baggage. Only problem is we didn't know that where they delivered the scooters was way down many, many, many other carousels from where our luggage was delivered. So uh, my, I'm thinking now that the best course of action for us will be moving forward because this last time we went to Alaska, we had them delivered again to the carousel back in Richmond when we got back to Richmond and they they took it to the gate. In other words, where you right, right where you come off the plane, you have a choice. You can either check it and it'll be delivered uh, to baggage when you get there, or you know you can uh, take it to the gate, scooter it to the gate. They take it from there and then they bring it back to the gate at the end. But you still need to get wheelchair assist if you need it when you if you have any layovers. So that would be what I would suggest because you just never know unless you call ahead of time and they can tell you at the airport, wherever your airport, your destination airport is, you know, if they can tell you where they're going to, you know, drop the scooter off with the baggage or down however many carousels or at what carousel, you know, then you'll know and you, they can just, you know, take the wheelchair over to wherever that is. But I have found it seems like it's different every time. So I think the next time we go, we are going to just scooter it to the gate. And when you go through security, you know, you can get up and you can walk through security if you want, and they'll ride your scooter through. Or you can ride your scooter up and they'll they'll very gently hand pat you down and let you go on through. Of course, you, have you still to have to put your carry carry on bag and whatever through the through the cameras and you know make sure everything's copacetic with that. And uh, I'm not sure if you have to take your shoes off. We have TSA pre-check, so you don't have to take your shoes off. Uh, but anyway, it's very doable to go ahead and scooter it to your gate, which I found to be more comfortable for me. That way I didn't have to have some stranger pushing me in the wheelchair. Not that they're strangers, you know, they're very kind folks, you know, and I always tip them just to tell you that and all of that. And I still got wheelchair assist, you know, at the, at my, lay, at our layovers, you know, we went from, uh, Richmond to Dallas, Fort Worth, Dallas, Fort Worth to Vancouver and the same coming back. And I had wheelchair assist at Dallas, Fort Worth, you know, it, and I just, I cannot tell you how much easier things have gotten for me since I'm not having to struggle to get to my gate, you guys. Now, you know, I just, I highly recommend this. I, hi I highly encourage you, if you are having mobility issues, to at the very least get wheelchair assist. It's free. We've gotten it through uh, American Airlines, actually, is the only place we've ever done it through. But I'm sure, I'm sure all of the airlines would offer wheelchair assist. I'm sure they do. So don't be afraid to call and ask and inquire and ask a lot of questions so that you know what to expect when you get to the airport. Uh, the next time we go, we have decided that I'm going to scooter to the gate and then get wheelchair assist at our layover. I think we're going in June and I think our layover is, oh gosh, I can't remember the airport, wherever it is, we will arrange through the airline to get wheelchair assist at our, as our, at our layover. And then I, we are decided we are going to go ahead and have them deliver by scooter to the plane's gate. And even if we, if we have to sit in the plane and wait for it to be delivered there, to be brought up from under the plane, they store it under the plane, of course, and they bring it up, you know, then we can sit there for five or 10 minutes or however long it takes them to do that, rather than not knowing exactly where the scooter is going to be. And I had a bad experience in Vancouver with their wheelchair assist. It was at night. I'm sure it doesn't happen during the day. One, we weren't aware where this, of where the scooter was going to be. Two, they dropped us off 
uh, way, uh, way ahead of where we had to get in line for security. So I ended up standing in the line for a good 20 minutes. And by the time I got to the kiosk where you put your, you know, where you go through uh, into Canada, where you cross the border, so to speak, into Canada, you know, I was, I was miserable and almost in tears, you know, and then we couldn't find the scooter and so on and so forth. So that's what we've decided to do. We have decided just to take a gate to gate, do the scooter gate to gate, do wheelchair assist, you know, at the layovers. And that's how I would do it if I were going to, you know, uh, say it to any of you. It's just easier and it's less steps, you know. Everybody is so kind. Please don't be embarrassed to do it. Please don't be embarrassed to ride your scooter through an airport or on the cruise ship, for that matter. Just, no, we'll that, you know, I, I, I dropped my pride, you guys. You know, I'm not a prideful lady anyway, but it's like, you know, it takes a little bit to take that step to go ahead and sit down on that scooter and say, I give, I give. I'm going to go ahead and take a scooter because it's just easier and I'm going to have a better time, you know? Okay, let me talk about uh, the cruise ship. Uh, we always stay in a hotel the night before. That's another thing I always encourage if you're cruising to go ahead and go to your port city the day before for, for you just never know what could happen with your flights. And the ship won't wait for you on embarkation day if you're for, for whatever reason you're late. Uh, Easy Air through Princess will get you to the first port of call, but they will not hold that ship on embarkation day, you guys. Very rarely will they hold the ship if anyone is late. So please go a day early. So we go a day early and we, uh, last couple of times we've had our own private hotel. We, we've made arrangements at our hotel and we've called for a transport to go to the cruise port. And we just make sure when we call that we say that whatever vehicle you send, well, well, the last time we went from the Spring Hill Suites in Fort Lauderdale, we had driven down and they had a um, their transport vehicle was a big van. It was, you know, we could just put the scooter right in there. But if you are going to a, a city that you don't know and you're getting your own transfers, just be sure to let them know that you have a, a mobility scooter and that you're going to need a vehicle that will be large enough to accommodate that. They will drop you right off at wherever you drop your luggage off, right there at the port. The porters will take your luggage. They'll put your scooter out of the vehicle that you rode to get there. You'll hop on the scooter and you just go through security and you go just like you do at the airport they will pat you down unless you can get up and walk you know uh i do have i've done it both ways you know it just depends on the day and how i'm feeling you know and uh and they'll take your scooter through or you can just ride your scooter up they'll pat you down and you just go on through putting your your backpack your carry-on whatever you have with you you know through the through the camera there and uh, same thing the uh, embarkation day especially is very easy because they usually are at a, you're at a cruise terminal with big hallways that, you know, the gangplanks, you just, you know, you just ride it right up and ride it right on the ship and you're there, you know, and you don't have to worry for any, you know, about anything getting delivered when you own your own, when you own your own scooter. Now, your mobility at sea and that thing, you will have to do your own research. I am not familiar with that, how that works when the scooters are are delivered to you, and so on and so forth. I just don't know that information, you guys. So you'll need to do your own research. And Princess provides you with all of that. You know, and I'm sure if you need to call the 800 number that they would they would give you all that information. They're very, 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 very accommodating, you guys. So you ride it on the ship, ride the scooter on the ship. Trust me, there are a lot of scooters on board these cruise ships. <laughs> Uh, and as I said, to get it in your state room, you know, of course they have ADA, you know, rooms. And if you can, uh, procure one of those, the door wide, the doorways are wider. And of course, if you are, are bound in a wheelchair, you know, that, that offer things that are down low, or if you can't stand at all, that kind of thing, you could always try to get one of those accessible cabins. We don't do that because I am mobile. I can get into it in and out of a bathtub, in and out of a shower, that kind of thing. So I don't worry about that kind of thing. The only thing our worry is, is that the scooter widthwise fits into the, into a stateroom door. And Chris just takes the, the, the handles off of, and we just leave them at home. And that way it easily fits through the, uh, you know, a standard stateroom door. So, 
you know, in and out the door. Chris does help me sometimes. It just depends on how our stateroom is configured. Uh, I'm not as good as some are at turning it and getting it straightened and pulled in. I backed it in the last time, which seemed to really work well. So I might try that from now on, backing it in, you know. Regardless, uh, I, I will say that at ports, uh, usually if you're not a tender port, you can go and they'll help you. The, the princess folks will help you, uh, you know, get your scooter onto the, onto the gangplank and, you know, even hold you back if, if it's like at a slope and in, in Alaska, sometimes depending on the tides, there's a pretty big slope. They help you. They help you at every turn. The only time you might have trouble is if you uh, are tendered, if you have a tender port. I don't even worry about going off on those, to be honest with you, if I don't think I can make it. Again, I can walk and I can use a cane and I can get, you know, decent amount, a decent amount of a distance. But I don't do it often just because I get really tired. So... Anyway, uh, I don't want to yammer on forever and a day here, but I just did want to uh, give you some brass tacks of my experiences, you guys. It has been a good experience, a uh, very good experience for me. And I thank Barb and Dawn here personally for, for helping me take that step to say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and use a mobility scooter because I'm just miserable, you know, if I don't. So I thank you, Barb and Don, for that, both of you. And thank you for letting me borrow your scooter that one time. And now Don and I just scooter around together and uh, we just have a big time. It's great, you know, and I'm never tired. I'm never tired and I can enjoy the cruise, you know, coming home, same, same thing. Uh, princess transfer, if you're going to use a princess transfer, for instance, instance, that doesn't matter. Just so you can climb up on the bus. If you can climb up on the bus and get to your seat, They'll put the, they'll store the, you know, your scooter underneath the bus and they'll get it out for you. And you'll just have to, you know, make your way off of the bus and to the scooter and same, same bit going into the, you know, into the airport, you know, just go ahead and ride it to your gate and just be sure to put your name on all parts that might get taken off. Like we have the name, our name and address and email address, telephone number on the basket and on the battery and on the scooter itself, you know, just be sure to label everything very nicely. Also put a cruise, uh, if you're cruising, go ahead and put a, a, a cruise uh, luggage tag on it too, because that way they'll know if for some reason it gets lost some way, they'll, they'll know where to deliver it, you know. So anyway, I guess that's it for this one, you guys. I really just wanted to give you some brass tacks. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments. If you would like me to address anything else uh, in this on this subject or any way else, please don't hesitate to let me know and, I'll, and I could maybe do a video for you. Uh, I know I have not, for those of you who maybe been waiting for my Caribbean cruise report, I haven't made it yet, you guys. You, I'm trying to wrap my brain around how much I want to do with that, if at all, because we, I just didn't do anything. We didn't do anything except for get off of Curacao in Aruba, you know, and I just, I, I just didn't do that much. I just, I actually, I didn't get off in Aruba. I just got off in Curacao, you know, and we just didn't do anything. That was, that cruise was meant to relax. I mean, I could give you the differences between Princess and Holland. If you'd be interested in my thoughts on that, I could do maybe something like that. But, uh, so our next anyway. cruise is in June. I'm not sure if we're going to be doing any traveling between now and then, but if we do, I'll be sure to bring it to you. Again, let me know if there's anything you think that I can answer for you. I'd be glad to take the, the time to do it for you here on my travels. And uh, again, welcome. Welcome to all my new subscribers. Thank you so much for subscribing. I very much appreciate it. Uh, uh, this channel is not monetized and I don't plan on monetizing it. So I appreciate all of you that have come in and just, just for the simple fact that you've come and you've subscribed. I appreciate it. So, uh, on my uh, Country Craft Corner channel, if you're ever interested in any kind of decorating or crafting, uh, come on over there and visit me, our Lens Country Craft Corner. I'll put a link for that in the description, too. You're welcome to join me over there. That's my bigger uh, channel of the two of my two channels, only because I do more decorating and, and uh, crafting than I do traveling. 
trust me, I'd like to travel all the time. Uh, but I do say some final words at the end of all of those videos. So I will say them here uh, because I just never know who might need them. I feel like these words were a gift from the Lord. So I'm going to go ahead and hopefully gift someone who's listening with them right here and now. I hope all is well with everyone. For those of you who might be struggling and suffering with a catastrophic illness or chronic pain, I hope that you have someone there with you, taking care of you, helping you get through each day, making the very, very best out of each day. I hope there's nothing weighing on your minds or your hearts, pulling your attention away from where you want it to be or from where it should be. I love y'all to bits, to bits, to bits, hugs all around, and I keep you in my thoughts and my prayers every single day. And with all that said, I'll just say, until next time, y'all take good, good care. And remember to check the description box for all of the links that I, that I talked about. All right? Until next time, take it easy, y'all. Bye-bye.